This episode is brought to you by my friends at Chubby's Shorts. Their tagline is, the weekend has arrived. And I gotta be honest, it does always feel a little bit like a weekend when I'm wearing my favorite five and a half inch training shorts because they have the comfort of something that you can throw on and you just forget all about. With the built-in liner, I get zero tugging, zero chafing, and zero adjusting when I've got the four-way stretch that Chubby's has going on. They're super soft, but always supportive. And I like take these things through every single movement imaginable from cleans, Olympic lifts, squats, lunges, double unders, biking, and more. I've even been working on my front splits this year and Chubby shorts have never held back any of my mobility work. And let's not forget to mention that Chubby's come in the best color combos, all with built-in compression liners. If you wanna go basic, you can, or if you wanna show off your personality like I do with some eye-popping patterns, they've got you covered. Make sure you visit chubbies.team forward slash Marcus Philly. You're gonna find your favorite new shorts in a variety of colors and inseam lengths. Again, I use the five and a half inch if you're looking to purchase what I've got. Make sure you use code MARCUS15 to get your 15% off on your first purchase. Today I'm gonna to be giving you the breakdown of how I look at the movement, the handstand push-up. But before we dive in, if you've been enjoying this channel and these videos have been providing you value, then please be sure to go hit that like button, subscribe for future videos, and comment below something that has impacted you positively. I really want to reach more people and your engagement helps support my mission. If you've been a fan of functional bodybuilding training methods and you've wanted to improve your inverted pressing strength, then here is how I tend to think about the progression of the handstand push-up. The handstand push-up for the purposes of this video will be performed against the wall for balance. But keep in mind, the handstand push-up could easily be progressed much further than this, and there are other athletes out there that are more skilled and strong in this pattern than I am. You can take this movement into a deficit handstand push-up. There's such a thing as freestanding handstand push-ups. There are freestanding handstand push-ups to a deficit, and then there's the elusive 90 degree push-up as well. But my goal for today is to provide you with some simple cues to help you start building confidence and then outline some basic progressions that can get you started down a path of developing strength in this inverted pressing position. So what does it take to build the handstand push-up? Well, first you need to have confidence upside down. If you aren't used to getting your body into that upside down position, it can definitely be scary to start. I have found that the older you are as an athlete, the more worrisome this becomes. Having coached hundreds, if not thousands of adults over the years to go upside down, I've just seen how terrifying this can be. What if your arms give out? What if you fall on your head? What if I break my neck? It's scary. And then I've seen coaches have this blanket statement that they are never going to coach the handstand push-up ever again. My feeling on this is that if you start slow, and you know when to progress your skill and your strength, then anyone can approach this movement. Even still, it is useful to have a starting place that utilizes external load and can therefore regress all the way down to the lightest weights that you have access to. What do I mean by external load? Well, just like developing a good push-up could leverage the dumbbell bench press to help build some strength and control to get started, so too there is an analogous movement for the handstand push-up. The movement I'm talking about is the dumbbell Z press. This movement is gonna mimic the ideal position for pressing with a neutral and even slightly flexed trunk as well as mimic the shoulder range of motion and demands for strength. Anyone who wants to get started building their handstand pushup should begin learning the dumbbell Z press. This will also be a powerful accessory strength exercise to help build alongside the body weight progression I'm gonna lay out today. For starters, work on higher reps, like 15 to 20 reps per set until you start to really feel confident with the range of motion and you can feel the shoulders working with the triceps in isolation. One important movement cue on this is to sit tall. If flexibility gets in the way, then lift your hips up onto a low box or a step. Attempt to complete the full range of motion with your arms and your head in line at the top of the rep. Next up, we're gonna tackle talking about isometric strength when you're upside down or inverted. See, any good movement progression towards a skill should include some isometrics to help build strength 
at key positions in the exercise. For the handstand push-up, we need to have great strength and shoulder endurance, particularly in the fully inverted positions with the arms locked out and straight. Building straight arm inverted shoulder endurance doesn't have to start upside down, however. Instead, we can build that up from a basic plank and begin to change the angle of our body to mimic the full handstand more and more. So we'll start with the tall plank and ensure that you have at least a two minute plank hold under your belt before moving on. Next, we'll take a page out of the yoga movement playbook and adopt the downward dog position for a more straight arm shoulder endurance. In an ideal position, your torso and arms and head will all be in one line. This is gonna mimic the foundation of a handstand position at the top. Aim for building up to 60 seconds at a time in this position and with confidence before you move on. Next is the pike handstand. From here on out, we are going to simply increase the amount of body weight that you're supporting on your hands. Each time we move the feet higher and higher on a box and ultimately get them inverted overhead, you'll have to support more of the load of your body on your shoulders and hands. So I want you to start with a low box, use the same 60 second benchmark that we use in the downward dog as a point at which you would consider progressing. Next, we're gonna be doing the pike handstand, this time with our feet on the wall. So once you've progressed the pike handstand feet on box to at least a 20 inch box, then I would recommend moving to a wall for further progression. It will make getting in and out of the handstand a lot easier and safer. Plus, it will allow you to make micro adjustments to the amount of load that you're actually supporting as you progress your strength. Next up in the progression is the wall facing handstand. This step of the progression is met when you can bring your hands back toward the wall within 12 inches. You're also gonna be wanting to hold this for 60 seconds at a time while staring at the wall. Think about getting your nose closer and closer to the wall as you're holding your position. The last isometric that we're gonna play around with is the handstand now with our back to the wall. This is the final step in getting your back to the wall and after sufficient time in the previous steps, you without a doubt will have the strength and endurance to get into this safely. The question now becomes about acquiring the skill to kick up into the wall, which also can be a little bit intimidating. So here's my simple kicking up to the wall tutorial. First, start with your hands down connected to the ground. Your arms are going to be straight. From that position, you are gonna start making small jumps with your feet to start to feel the weight of your body on your hands. Next, you're gonna start doing slightly bigger jumps. And these slightly bigger jumps with a bent leg overhead is meant to help you figure out where is the wall. After those big jumps, we're gonna to go to a large jump. And that large jump with the bent legs should help you arrive in a hold against the wall. Now you're ready to practice the standing start. The standing start has arms straight out in front of you, control your descent down to the ground, connect your hands to the floor, and then just like you practiced already, kick the feet up into a handstand. Okay, you've got your upside down confidence. You've practiced your isometrics. Now we're gonna work on the motor control and some strength development for the exercise, the handstand push-up. Please don't skip the previous steps. This is where people get into the most trouble with their handstand push-up progressions and can increase their injury risk by progressing too quickly without the necessary endurance and foundational shoulder strength that we practiced before. But once you've done so, then we need to start building up more inverted pressing body position awareness and motor control. This all starts with understanding the basics of how the handstand push-up tripod works and then navigating how to achieve that position. So let's do a tripod lesson. When the head and the hands are both on the floor in the handstand push-up, those three points of contact are in a triangle. This is known as the handstand push-up tripod and we need to learn how to create this position when we're upside down and maybe disoriented. When we get into the tripod position, we properly load the shoulders, which is the big moving muscle group for this pattern, more so than the elbows, which is ideal. If you were to lower yourself with your head directly between your hands in one line, this would place less than ideal stress on the elbows and the shoulders, and you won't have as much control and pressing strength. So to learn this, we're gonna start with the downward dog push-up. You'll start in your downward dog position. You'll lower your head slightly in front of your hands, about six inches in front of your fingertips, and lightly tap your head. 
On each press back to the top, it's always important to regain the starting position, align the hips, shoulders, and hands with the head between the arms. From there, we can move on to the pike handstand push-up. You can now move your feet slightly up onto a box and repeat the same mechanics. A cue that can help is on the finish position of each repetition, bring your nose back towards the box or bench at the top of each rep. As you build confidence in that pike handstand push-up, you may want to start to add some range of motion as a tool to progress this exercise further without having to take the next step to the wall just yet. This is called the deficit pike handstand push-up. Using some plates or a pair of parallettes can help do the trick. All right, we're ready to move on to a back-to-wall handstand push-up eccentric. This is the next part of the progression. We're going to work on lowering strength only. These are called negatives or eccentrics. You're only going to be performing the lowering phase of each rep. Going down will always be easier than coming back up. And by focusing on this portion of the range of motion exclusively, we're going to be able to do a lot more reps and build a lot more strength. For the handstand push-up negative, be sure to continue to aim for that tripod position at the bottom. On every single rep, I encourage you to pause at the bottom of the tripod. Then you're going to kick down off the wall and repeat the cycle from the top. It's really important that you have a soft surface underneath your head for this so that you can feel confident to go down and not hurt yourself. If you need to add a small pad to shorten the range of motion at first, it's okay. Once you've built sufficient strength, then you might want to increase your range of motion. This is called a deficit handstand push-up negative. Never progress to deeper ranges of motion unless you have maximal control through the full negative at the previous height that you were working at. Okay, we have arrived. Now we're gonna be developing strength in the full range of the handstand push-up. Here is the safe strength tempo that I encourage you to use. See, eventually after doing sufficient negative work and practice, you will have the strength to press back up from the bottom of the tripod to the top. When that happens, I encourage you to practice your reps with the specific tempo 3-1-X-1. What that means is you're gonna perform every rep with a three second negative, you're gonna pause one second in the tripod, you're gonna press fast up to the top, and then when you get to the top, you're gonna to hold that handstand for another second. This tempo is going to reinforce everything that we've already learned from positions to slow eccentrics. It's gonna help you build strength, confidence, and keep you safe. Now that you can perform at least one repetition, perhaps you're gonna start looking for a way to progress. And if you are, I encourage you to use the every minute on the minute progression variation. This muscle endurance progression goes as follows. At the beginning of every minute, perform one repetition with the strict 3-1-X-1 tempo that I outlined. On the next minute, you're gonna perform a second repetition. On the third minute, you perform your third repetition. So you're performing one rep every minute and go up until you're at 10 minutes. In a single session, you'll have completed 10 perfect handstand push-ups at tempo. To progress from there, in the weeks that follow, you could increase that number from one to two. So now you're doing two repetitions every minute for a full 10 minutes, and so forth. Now, where do you take your handstand push-up from there? Well, it really depends on what your goals are. Do you want to use this movement inside of your conditioning work and Metcons? Do you want to build more advanced strength and balance in the freestanding handstand push-up? You know, I guess depending on where you want to take things, the progression might look different. So I encourage you to explore or ask questions in the comments below. Now, I don't want to end this without giving you some of my favorite functional bodybuilding accessory exercises that have great carryover to this handstand progression. So in no particular order, consider adding any of these movements alongside the body weight skill progression that we've outlined already. The first accessory exercise is the yoga push-up. Be sure to keep your elbows close to your side and this will really mimic that tripod position and build a ton of time under tension and endurance to your shoulders. The second I've already mentioned, that's the dumbbell Z press. And as I said, you wanna begin with this exercise just to mimic the pressing positions of the handstand pushup, but again, use this alongside your body weight training. You can do this with dumbbells, as I said before, or with a barbell. The third exercise is the standing single arm dumbbell press. I like this press variation as well. It's quite valuable for building unilateral pressing strength. And I approach this one with the mentality that you're going to try and maximize the range of motion on every single press. That means bring that dumbbell all the way down to your chest on every rep. It's going to build great mobility, flexibility, 
and mid-range strength too when it comes time to do your handstand push-ups. And then lastly, we need tricep accessory work. See, the triceps play a big role in the lockout of the handstand push-up, so it will pay off to train them alongside your handstand push-up training. For that, I like banded pushdowns and I like supine dumbbell tricep extensions. For the banded pushdown, keep the elbows pinned to your side and ensure that you get a full lockout on every single rep. For the supine dumbbell tricep extension, I want you to stop your reps just shy of the top of the range of motion, meaning slightly before the arms are at 90 degrees to the floor. What this does is it will keep tension on the triceps throughout the exercise, never allowing them to get a rest. Okay, that concludes today's handstand push-up lesson. If you found this video useful, please drop us a like and a comment below and any questions or personal experiences that you've had with the handstand push-up. And as always, thank you for lending me your time. I know it's precious and I'm grateful you shared some of it with me today. Take care.